Hey guys, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Tony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy and we are in the Rocks Full of Brains, a collection of asteroids out in the wilds of space with an automatic rocket going back and forth to get us some um, automatic materials over there. But that's what we were doing last time. And the other thing we were doing last time was making sure that we could get Grub Grubs and Sweetles going so that we can have another stream of food. But once we've set this up, we're going to start encountering another issue. It's an issue that we are already encountering over Don Irigal here, an issue of overpopulation. Now when it comes to the uh, the creatures over here, the Grub Grubs and the Sweetles, well I've set up a small little video here to show uh, show what's going to happen. Uh, the Grub Grubs and the Sweetles, very easy to deal with, just apply a little bit of water, they will drown after a while. But these guys, these guys here, the Poke Shells, they are going to take a bit more of specialist care to be able to deal with in a safe and, uh, safe and expedient manner. Uh, so let's get started with the Sweetles first, that's definitely the first thing we're going to be uh, dealing with Sweetles, Grub Grubs. I'm going to set up something in here. We're going to deconstruct this and I'm going to build another one over this side here. Uh, grab some power line and make sure everything is connected together. I'm going to set a little drowning um, chamber up in the corner over this side. We're going to use an automatic door here uh, and we're going to have a little, uh, little uh, block of materials. And combined with some rather fancy automation, we're going to have the room here decide whether there are too many creatures living in this space. And if so, it's going to open the trap. And any time that any Sweetles or Grub Grubs find their way into the trap, it will then close up uh, and uh, drown, drown them. And then hopefully we'll be able to get the meat out of there over to our electric grill. And then there will be a nice closed, closed loop. No loose ends to worry about. Let's see here. We, we've got the connection to the kitchen down here. Let's let's take a line of uh, of railing up this way, and then anything that needs to be added to the kitchen. In fact, let's bring it up the uh, the ladder here. Anything that needs to go towards the kitchen can run along here. Why is it ten? Oh, because we don't have Curie here, and we're still recharging from the last time we brought Curie over. So maybe we'll actually uh, try and figure out how to do this elsewise. Uh, but we, we need we need to pull this down, and no one's going to come along and do this because uh, they. They don't have that as a priority, so let, let's make sure that that does become a priority. Maybe maybe also rip down some of these ladders that also will not be a priority unless I uh, tell them that it's very, very, very important, like emergency important. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay, with a new Sweetle in and being incubated, I'm going to go ahead and say that these are all very important jobs as well. We want to try and get some liquids dropped down on top of this mechanised air. Well, actually, we want them underneath the mechanised airlock, but we're, it needs to look like it's going through the top of it here. Uh, we also need a little bit of automation. I can't remember the first place that I saw this. I, I know Francis John uses it quite a bit. Uh, there are other people that I have seen who use this. Uh, you, you have a critter sensor inside the trap, a critter a sensor outside the trap, uh, an AND gate and a NOT gate. Very, very, very simple stuff to put together. The critter sensor inside the trap is looking for just a single critter, just a single critter. The one outside is saying how many to be over before the door will open. I'm going to set that to four. I think that's probably the, uh, the best way to go ahead and deal with that. Two inside the incubator because of course the, uh, the, the critter sensor here picks up both eggs and critters quite awkward. I, I kind of wish it wasn't like that, but that, that is indeed what it's like. So four would mean there's two running around and no one's come along to relocate them. So we probably need to deal with those numbers. Maybe say five. We, we can allow for four and then have a fifth that will uh, go and uh, meet its demise in such ways. Uh, what, what, what's down here? We've got a... a sweep errand that is in a little bit above its station. Okay, that, that's cool. Let, let's just wait for all of this to get built. And whilst we wait for all this work to get done, I would like to take this moment right here and tell you about the people who make sure I get all of my work done. That's right, my patrons. Scroll up the screen right now, you will see a list of names, list of names of the guys and girls that have gone along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly monetary donation to make sure that me and my channel can continue on into the future with the maximum of shenanigans. I really love what it is that I do here and I really couldn't do it without the support of everyone you see on this list. So from the very, very bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you so much. 
Okay, and the real question was whether we were going to get any of our duplicates caught in there. And no, no, we did not. The other question is, what what else do we have set super high priority here? Let's, let, let's turn those off. Those are not necessary. What is necessary is just a little bit of liquid. Just a little bit of liquid. I'm going to go for water because the, it's, it's what we've got lying around in abundance. I mean, is it though? Could we do have... Right up here, next to a pump, uh, we've got some crude oil and some petroleum. We could use either one of those. Do we even? Yeah, here, here's the pitcher pump, so we can we can get water out as well. I think I think that's probably the better way. Let's uh, let's check the errands. It's saying that there are some to be had. Let's let's see what it turns up with. Oh my gosh, they've added some quality of life here. I was just trying to figure out how to explain all the mess of um, automation that has gone on here. And I've noticed that they've put a little tick box on the critter sensor. It counts the eggs or the critters. I am blown away. Praise Cly. It's what they're here for. They provide the best gaming. They really, really do. Okay, so this one outside, as I said, is detecting the number of creatures outside. This is like, yeah, cool. Can you open the door? Police. Of course, we go through a knock gate. Uh, it gets a little complicated here. But this one is de uh, detecting the uh, the critters outside. This one detecting the critters inside. I don't want to count eggs. We're just we're just gonna, gonna turn that off. If it's above one, this this also turns green. That'll turn this green. That will close the door because there's more. There's enough critters outside that we don't want to save them, and there's enough critters inside that we don't want to save them either. Closing the door and leading to some drowning. The liquids didn't get de delivered, and then nighttime happened. So let's. Let's see what's going on here. We've got bottles of water in our water sieve. And then down here, I notice we've got several bottles of polluted water. Down below, we've got regular water. There's quite a few actual random liquids floating around that I uh, was not aware of. Where, where is Rutherford? Here he is. He's uh, taking, taking his time for some reason. Hopefully, this should now flood the, the bottom out. Uh, let's turn that off of super high priority. Oh, Ooh, no, we, we, need, we do need more. Bring me more. Well, this is a little awkward. We've got this tiny little blob of carbon dioxide back there, but it's such a tiny blob of carbon dioxide that it's holding back uh, nearly half a ton of water. Nearly half a ton of water. Let's see uh, if we can get some more delivered here. Rutherford, of course, coming down, picking up what's at the bottom. Another 200 kilogram delivery. This is going to give us 600 kilograms of liquid up here. Is it at all going to be able to push back the carbon dioxide? I, I kind of doubt it, actually. I, I feel like we might be stuck with a little bit of an awkward situation here. It's only 180 grams, and it should surely, surely be able to just kind of like pop up and over. But, but no, no, we, we've got problems. I mean, at a thousand kilograms, at a full ton, it, it moves upwards, right? The liquid will, will splosh upwards. Let's see what happens when we hit that capability. Okay, this should be enough water to push us over the ton. Is it just going to flow up and back? Is is that actually what we're what we're looking at here? That that would be quite inconvenient. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, it did, but actually, it solved the issue. All right, let's now turn that off, and uh, I guess we're going to mop the area up. <laughs> Okay, let's do a quick test of the systems here. Let's turn off the eggs and it'll give us, if above zero, this gives a red signal, that gives a red signal. Why hasn't this door closed? What, what's what's going on here? Red, 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 green. Ah, so this means, ah, okay, this is not quite as I expected it to be. Uh, so if it's two reds, of course, the door will just be open. But that means uh, when I've got this selected, I can't move the, the camera around at all. That, that's a bit weird, but now, now that I'm out, okay, that that is unexpected, yeah, okay, fair, fair enough, little, little bug there, um, but if we, if we count the eggs, we say we're above two, uh, and then let's just simulate the fact that one com comes in here, so we'll say we're, if we're below one, uh, you know, it's kind of the inverse of one going in there. You can see that it all gets filled up with water. And this, of course, would drown any creature that is in there. We want to be above one, th above zero. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's, that's a fully working kill chamber there. I think kill chamber sounds a little bit aggressive. But that is indeed what it is. Uh, evolution chamber. Evolution chamber. Let's go over to Irigao. And let's have a look at these guys. This is going to be 
completely different because as we've seen the poke shells do not drown also we have got a lot of uh, of pips here uh one thing that i have heard is a good way of doing it is dealing them dealing with them via the methods of temperatures if we come into the poke shells and see what the minimum they can survive as minus 30 now that's going to be quite difficult to maintain but i don't think it's undoable while we're at it what about that yeah pip pips are also minus 30 a dracos also so the same if I can get hold of them Draco uh, 15 even easier even easier so minus 30 I also noticed that we've got this um, heavy what join plate going through here so if we were to seal off this area from the rest of the base I don't know let's say insulated tiles across this way uh, we'd have to make sure that they're all insulated tiles of course uh, and then put in some sort of super cold liquid just over here uh, again and maybe using the crude oil cycling around we've we've got a problem we got we'll come back to that uh, maybe use crude oil or, or petroleum or maybe even as we've got it here uh, we can bring ethanol down to a suitably low temperature it's not there ethanol liquid we can bring that down all the way to 114 yeah okay ethanol is probably the uh, the liquid of choice here and then we just make these tiles really really cold maybe even flood this area and make the liquid really really cold the fact that we've got this heavy watt join plate means we're probably gonna have to figure out a way of making a small vacuum here to isolate this area yeah that 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 might be a thing we need to do perhaps even move the power spline yeah as much as i don't really want to it might be the, the key here yeah the, all five heavy watt wires contribute to the negative decor here so i i really don't want to bring the power line down hmm Okay, we're going to be moving into vastly uncharted territories here. I think what I'm going to do is move this critter uh, drop-off up just a little bit. Maybe put in another floor here. Try not to uh, to trap these guys down here if at all possible. Might even ask for people to come along and mop this floor up. Uh, and then this this is not going to work. Not, not the setup that we've got here. We can, however, make it work. Uh, I've been doing some testing and we, we're going to need to widen it out. We're going to move this conveyor shoot over this side in fact let's just move that conveyor shoot over this side uh, and then maybe delete everything that is not the incubator we want to keep hold of the incubator you know what? no we're, we're, we're going to get rid of the incubator as well because we're going to move it somewhere else I'm even going to take the door out. I think I think that's probably the best way. We'll replace the door with a nice insulated floor here. Uh, we're going to have uh, maybe maybe even three tiles. We need to rip this down. We're going to have troubles with all these creatures down here. We might need to let them loose and then try and capture them all over again. Not not the end of the world, especially when we have, would have built them a much um, more permanent habitat, shall we say? Okay, this will probably be the most tricky bit. Spitzer's just about to try and take this door down. Can we get this put in place before he actually... Uh, before all of the bad guys get out of here. That, that, that's the, the thing we don't want to do. Let's just turn it up to a super high priority. Are there not items just on the floor? Okay, fine. Oh, is Spitzer going to be able to... Where's Compton going as well? No, 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 no. Uh, these guys need to be on the other side of these tiles when... Chandra makes the building here. Let's uh, let's just move them a long way away, and, and hopefully that will be fine. We've only lost three critters out of the out of the pile so far, so that that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Of course, we are going to need to have some ladders running down there. Okay, great. The way has been opened. Indeed, we've put a small hydrogen pump at the top here because uh, we're starting to get a little bit overwhelmed with hydrogen. I'm also making some changes to this, what I'm now going to call power corridor. Uh, there are various reasons why we're going to need power along here. Let's leave two for the battery and then one, two for the battery. We should be able to replace this system down here, get the heavy watt wire out of there. I don't think that's something we're going to need. In fact, don't, don't, don't destroy that yet because, of course, we're going to want want to connect the wire up to that of course we can we just come down like that i think we can just come down like that uh, the jumbo battery is what we want to replace okay brilliant that that is exactly what i want to build we got the power to uh, to get rid of this heavy watt wire get rid of this power setup and uh, run the kitchen and and various other lights and such forth uh, but we will also be able to get power in for well the pump 
and perhaps moving the incubator system to over here. I have I have ideas on how we can deal with the overflow of critters. Of, o overflow of critters. I should I should finish that sentence. <laughs> Okay, with the full power bridge complete, I'm just going to ask for everything like that to be destroyed. Not that particular bit of wire there though, and of course the battery and transformer, uh, which unfortunately we're going to have to wait till tomorrow for everybody to get on. 43 Compton is stressed. My, my, my bro, what have you been doing? You're, spo you're supposed to be cooking. Let's, let's have a look at the kitchen. I mean, there is some rock pile on the floor, but it looks relatively nice here. I wonder what has gone wrong with the decor overlay. It's not, it's not great, is it? It could be better. So the power has been retrofitted, and we are starting to pump all of this hydrogen gas a long way down to join this hydrogen gas here and be turned into power. Uh, I've also asked for some airflow tiles to be put into place. That's a bit more long term, though. The next thing we need to do is to take this... These, uh, these ladders, that's not a ladder, uh, take these ladders here and continue. Why can't I select the ladder? Why won't you let me do this? Dig ladder B. Thank you very much. Okay, and we're going to carry on all the way up here, trying to make our way to what is laughably called an airlock over here, leaving this area free to become an industrial brick, because that's what it's going to be. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have um, a steam turbine, it's going to have a cooling block, and we're going to be try trying to make this area really, really cold. Cold enough to kill. Okay, I think this next one should be it. Spencer should be able to uh, build the ladder whilst this is happening. Oh, look at the interaction with the ladders here. It's causing a little bit more mess than I was hoping for, but I think we should be fine. Everything looks to be dealing quite well. We're just going to empty this out, make ourselves a little bit of room. I think we're probably going to end up digging all of this away as well. Let's, let's just do something like that. Hubble should be along relatively shortly to make that happen. I'm going to pull this along one more block. I'm not sure what why it hadn't already had that done. All of this should filter down. We're not actually using all of this water right now. Oh, it's it's actually gonna make its way down into the super cold area where it will freeze. I mean, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, we've run into a small problem here at uh, Irregao. We are running out of steel, and we need steel for things like building the thermal aqua tuna and, of course, the uh, the steam turbine. These two things combine together to make us some cold, uh, and we can't do it without those. Over on Blagolia, though, we have, we have various volcanoes that make refined metals that should be able to give us the materials that we need for such things. Unfortunately, this has been uh, this place has been suffering a little tragedy for the past couple of cycles. Well, for, for about 15 20 cycles this uh, natural gas geyser has only just come back online its dormancy as you can see is very long meaning uh that there's there's not a great deal of, that's what you're about to gas not a great deal of gas in here and it's not turning over the power all that well as you can see the batteries are empty and this means that our interplanetary launchers are not running anywhere near as regularly as they should be indeed eggshell in the system what is this but hopefully i can make the use of something that we've got over here behind this uh pile of rocks pile of tiles we have ourselves a hydrogen vent now this is a nice and easy thing to be able to take advantage of we just use the ample supply of refined materials that we've got or indeed not refined materials and make a whole bunch of hydrogen generators over here i've already been putting in the power spline for it so i'm hoping that this should be able to come along and uh, save our bacon when it comes to the power situation that we find ourselves in. Look, we got we got people running on on treadmills just to try and keep the uh, the flashing beacon going, and and the water, of course. Life cannot be real. We must actually be in some sort of twisted game where we are watched over by higher intelligences that like to do things for the ironic crop comedy of it all. This hydrogen vent is dormant. I, I, I think well, that's that's just like every vent. Every vent I have ever opened up, it's been dormant. I, I just really, I cannot, cannot get over it how, how reliable this actually is. Well, when it does snap into life, we should be able to uh, to get all the power up and running here. If we, if we do this, we should be able to vacuum vacuum this area out. I'm not actually that bothered about doing that right now because people are coming through to sweep out the uh, the floor. So if we turn this back on and snip it again, uh, as soon as the floor has been completely emptied out, of course, this is uh, one of the things that I'll be doing. Uh, anyway, though, over on Irregal, I've been going around, I've been making some changes. I've been using my uh, my F4 screen here, looking at the uh, the metals that everything is made out of, trying to find things like, like these that are made out of 
steel and seeing if I can change them to any other materials. We're mostly out of other materials now. We're starting to run low, but I have managed to save enough for uh, a, th a thermal aqua tuner. So we're going to pop one of those down. Uh, where do we want it? We want it nice and close. I'm just going to pop it straight there. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what we make the steam turbine out of, but I've only got steel. So we're going to do that here as well. I think I'm going to have to rip down this door and make this a an insulated wall. I think that might very well be the case. Okay, we've got the beginnings of a hydrogen power plant here. Let's uh, connect this all up. Let's at least clean up the, uh, the the source of hydrogen that's going to come out. Here you can see the floor has been swept up and thankfully, oh no, the batteries ran out overnight. I was going to say, thankfully we had enough power to last through the night, but it doesn't look like we did. How about up here? Oh, we managed to save most of the rad bolts. That's good. That's good. Of course, these are the things that will power the interplanetary launcher and uh, we, we need them. We need them. Well, it took scrimping, it took slaving, it took ripping down grooming stations, but I finally managed to get all the infrastructure in place for the steam turbine. We've got a little bit of, it, of um, automation going on in the background here. Do we have anything other than steel wire? We don't. I want to try and somehow connect these together. I'm sure we will uh, refine some cobalt or something like that. But the next thing I kind of need to do is to uh, just kind of dig a hole in there. I'd like to fill this area up. In fact, I'd like to make that tile right there the priority if we can, and then we'll We'll dig here, the water will spill everywhere, it will make a horrific mess, but we'll displace the majority of the... Uh, ooh, there it goes, there it goes. Maybe I should have done somewhere without so much sand. Uh, okay, th this is fun. Let's, uh, let's get out of this point of view. Hubble is actually already doing the dig, so that's pretty good. One and two. Okay, that's good. Let's press F4. It looks like the liquid has very nicely filled up that entire area. Be beautiful. That's that's exactly what I was not expecting that to go that well, and uh, it did. So yay. <laughs> I think it's time we sent someone else over to uh, Reverse Lynn whilst we're waiting for some of the materials to roll in. Uh, as soon as she's taken apart and sent over the... I, I want to call them airways, but obviously not. Franklin has the power to go around and make some of these uh, these railings, the, the, the mechatronics engineer stuff. So she will go around and do a whole bunch of those. So hopefully we can start automatically pulling all of these eggs out of here. Uh, we are at critical mass for some of these creatures right now right now so some point really soon we'll be finding out whether the uh, the evolution chamber works or not with this last piece of power going in place oh man really is there one more piece of power to go in place uh, with with this little bit of power to go in place the thermal aqua tuna is actually pretty much ready to go and i feel like that means we need to start siphoning off some of this ethanol uh now ooh, i've made a little mistake by not chopping this right here uh you can see that the bridge here will always take priority and always send ethanol to go make power if we need power that is the thing that will definitely happen if we don't need power and we don't need to keep filling up this area here as soon as it goes ahead and fills up this whole area we will start filling up this pipe and then come through to our thermal aqua tuna which for some reason still needs some power that one that power right there okay so it should now be fine to start taking some of the ethanol from here as long as we're not actually gonna go ahead so there's 10 yeah okay go ahead and use the ethanol but it turns out we are at the point where we can carry on i wonder what we swapped that pipe into uh th that's fine it, it looked like it went from uh, insulated pipe to insulated pipe so this is now going to carry on up here slowly it's going to fill up this area and we're making our way down to uh, minus 50 if this ever gets below above minus 50 which it is going to be ma the majority of the time look at this we're at that 70 at the moment uh, it will run it through the aqua tuna and cool it down. Hopefully during that process Spitzer will come along and just kind of fill everything in for us. I, I really do hope that that is the highest priority there. Okay, here we go. We, we've got very small amounts going in, but it should just go through. I'm not sure if the way that I've um, wired this up means that at some point we're going to have troubles. There, There is definite... Uh, I've wired this up a, a weird way. Not wired it. I've piped it up a weird way. Uh, so there, the, normally there's more room on the input than there is the output. We've got this extra line here on the output. Yeah, it, it should be fine. Should be fine. It's going in... Let's have a look. We've got 30s, but then, of course, it's getting warmed up with the 70 here. Take us back to 50. 
But whilst this is topping up, let's go over to reversing. Yes, indeed. I'm going to uh, remove this guy. We're going we're gonna to watch him. We're going to watch him very gently for a little while and see if he moves over into this area here. Uh, he won't actually be moved anywhere. I, I really hope he won't be moved anywhere uh, because this... this um, ranch up the top here is full uh, he's just he's just gonna sit does he not know how to get over a one high tile uh let, let's does it show navigation so navigate he doesn't know how to get over a one one high tile oh <laughs> and i have no idea when grug Brubs stop being children okay i'm gonna try and wrangle him out of there hopefully we can just bring him over to this place and then we're just gonna move the floor up by one of course it's, it's a very obvious choice there what what's going on here why why are you trying to oh you're grooming okay don't don't worry about that that's fine okay do, do you reckon someone's gonna come along and deliver this here i don't know Let, let's let's turn this up to a high priority and then also i would like that to go in place franklin's the one who says they're gonna come over and grab them uh, are you going to move them up or are you going to move them down? Okay, that's good. Now, grab this tile. I also want that built very, very importantly. If, if, if we could do it, like, right now. Uh, let's turn that one down as well. If, so if someone could just come along, fill in this tile. Anybody? Rutherford says he's on it, but so far away. At this point, I would have expected the Grub Grub to have jumped back in the hole. Like, shown some, some severe, like self-preservation skills but here we go we, we filled in the tile that's cool uh now we just need to get everything else built oh will he do it oh of course if he can't will, will he jump in i don't if he can't go up and down one tile he just won't go up and down one tile hmm. this is awkward <laughs> This larger one can go up and down slopes, so we're just going to have to wait for the baby to not be a baby anymore. And it's going to eat all our sugar in the meantime. Maybe we could figure out a way to filter the sugar. Been waiting around all cycle to see whether the Grub Grub Worm will turn into an adult at five. It turns out no. It, as it's living to 150 as opposed to the normal... Oh, well, this is 75. I'm fairly sure the normal lifespan, actually, if we go and have a look at the uh, the hatch, that's what I consider to be normal. It was 100. Yes, 100. So, well, well, these guys are alive for less time. Okay, I wonder whether these also have a shorter baby cycle because of it. Hmm, yeah, the, 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 these are things that need to be figured out. Okay, we, we have an adult now. The navigation does indeed go down there, so we've, we've just got to wait. At some point, this will occur. Maybe we can, like, speed our way through it. Probably not. They're, they're very, very cramped and glum. They don't move around as much. I don't know whether that's the case. C cramped? Uh, I suppose there are an awful lot of grub grub eggs. Uh, if, we, if we count the eggs, we're, there's seven, including this guy. Wow. Well, somewhat annoyingly, they just want to keep going on top of this door. So I wonder whether I could uh, put another door down here. Is it the knock gate? Is the knock gate in the way? Just just something to take up a little bit of the room. Maybe even just the one tile would do. Uh, let, let, let's see if we can do this. And then I think the grub grub itself, if we can actually select it, should now... Oh, it, its navigation still goes. I was kind of expecting the navigation not to go up there because it was like previous oh it can climb all the way up it can climb all the way up that that's also slightly unfortunate Let, let's ask for another another wall to be built and we'll uh, we'll see if that can stop it okay yes indeed building an extra tile will go up that far next question will the grub grub just please get into the tiny area that that would be great if we, if we could make that happen i'd be very happy Oh, here we go. No, no, you just stop there. Okay, so it's almost like they know. It's almost like they know. I've watched them walk up to the side and no further so many times now. I think Clay might have put something in to nerf this particular type of trap. I, I, I feel like we're we're having troubles here. I mean, if nothing else, they, go, they are going to starve at some point some point it's gonna it's gonna be far in the future far in the future talking of over here we've been trying to cool this down i mean the ethanol is down to minus nine that's pretty good we're not doing wonderful at chilling out our our pips here though and i was kind of hoping at some point we'd get ahead of restocking these uh these, these stables over here and we could see this uh this little system that i've got over in action i was kind of hoping the pinch row would would grow up become an adult wander into here the critter sensor would pick up that it's there 
open up the, the bottom door and close the top door. Turns out critters can just kind of walk on doors, so if you don't do something to try and push them down, they will uh, they will they will stay on top. Uh, but if we just let one of the small ones in and swap, they won't drop down, and that's because I don't want the small ones to die immediately. They they have to grow up and drop their shells, and then then we get double the malt from them. I've even now dropped their food in the water to see if that will get them down there. I, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. Oh, it's happened at some point. Oh man, I really wanted to see it. Uh, it's happened at some point. We've got, we got some meat down there. Thankfully being picked up by Bull. It must have just happened. Just happened. Oh man, I can't believe I missed it. I can't believe I missed it. What I was doing instead was making sure that all of my excess pips from my pip farm over here got delivered over into my cold box. We're down to minus 40. Uh, I've been doing this by connecting and disconnecting because the power draw for this is, is a little bit much for our little power setup up down here indeed we, we yeah we, we we got problems we've got problems these are problems that can be overcome uh and i'm hoping that the ability to chill this box down to what are we going for minus 50 uh i would actually like to go a little bit lower than that minus 70 something like that in fact let's do it let's let's just put in minus 70 and let that roll uh until it gets down there of course i say let it roll i'm now going to cut the power <laughs> Oh, we're freezing out the carbon dioxide. I forgot that would be a side effect of this. I suppose that's fine. I suppose that's fine. I would have preferred liquid carbon dioxide if we can, but I don't think that that is actually... I know it's not a thing in real in the real world, but is it a thing in auction not included? Let's have a look. It goes straight to... Oh, there is a liquid. Minus 48. But when does that turn into a... Oh, much... Okay. We, we, there's a very thin line to be straddling there. I wonder, I wonder whether we can hit that. Minus 40. Let, let's try that. If above minus 40. And then the the liquid carbon dioxide would do a much better job at transferring its temperature across to these guys. Because once they are getting cold, they're, they're not getting that cold, are they? There it is. There it is. Liquid carbon dioxide. I knew, I knew if we just played with the settings a little bit it would work for us beautiful okay carbon dioxide seemed like it had a very narrow range of usable temperatures here but bleach stone off gases chlorine and i'm fairly sure once that chlorine that touches some of the atmosphere around here it's going to cool itself down and we're going to find ourselves with a beautiful liquid on the floor that's that's what i'm hoping for a nice thick chlorine liquid to uh, to pass on its property uh, pass on its temperature to the uh, the pips here i thought i'd uh, put a temperature shift plate in the middle and before i've even got that in there things have got very complicated what have we got down here we got some uh, some chlorine liquid kicking about uh, the fact that we've left this door open uh, everything seems to be getting pulled down here which kind of makes sense because obviously all the gases are being condensed into solids and or liquids so what gases are left are having to uh, spread out amongst everywhere the hydrogen in here definitely should help out i mean i'm wondering if because uh, hydrogen has one of the highest thermal conductivities of any of the gases this is taking quite a long time to put this thermal uh, temperature shift plate in here i was hoping that it would share all the gases around. Shanda moved out of the way, so now the door is closed. I do wonder whether the temperature differential here is a bit of a problem. If we have a look, this is quite warm out this way and obviously quite cold down here. Uh, we've got a temperature, uh, a thermally insulating tile here. I was kind of hoping that the doors would also do a similar job, but obviously they're made out of metal, so they're probably not going to do a similar job. Uh, everything seems to be cooling down nicely, though. The carbon dioxide, about, about 10 degrees at the moment bringing everything nicely down we've got we've got most things down to minus 70 almost all the pipes i mean that that's great that's great this uh, critter drop off is actually raising in temperature okay that's that's unusual not not as expected i guess that'll be why the ethanol has just started chilling down to minus 83 now Ooh, yes we're going lower i've set it to minus 90 hopefully that gives us a nice buffer so that we don't go down below ethanol's um, minus 114 hopefully the coldest we get is 104 104 would be very very nice very 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 chill oh we ran out of power that is unfortunate i suppose we are just at the beginning of the day so we, we don't have the solar power adding to it all 
there I am, racking my brain, being like, what what liquids do we actually have access to that are still liquid at minus 100? But of course, the one very obvious liquid is the liquid that we've already got inside the pipes. Of course it's going to stay liquid. It, it's liquid already. So we're going to throw a whole bunch of ethanol on the floor here. That should hopefully bring this down nice and chill as well. Okay, this is good. And hopefully this will then be just a little bit better at um, conducting the temperatures across at 0 0.1 as opposed to the 0 0.08 that the uh, the chlorine was and let's have a look that already that the pips temperatures are dropping fast well the good news is I can physically sit here and watch the temperature go down point by point I don't think that's quite so true for at the top here. Oh, actually actually that is true for the top here it turns out putting a little bit of ethanol in there was the winner well to say that it took a mighty long time I think is a bit of an underestimate I think probably something like six real world hours to try and get everything going this this looked like it was gonna work so well this should it actually does work well we've seen we've seen meat come out of here we just gotta wait for people to move into the gap and this of course does also work but it just seems to take a little bit longer than we would have liked I also would have liked to have seen a pinch row get pushed into here and then um, the crab walk around in the liquids and unfortunately have to uh, to suffer the cold but that that unfortunately has not happened today I will very much be showing you some other time but I'm afraid for now I have most definitely run out of time I will see you guys next time where we are going to be taking on the interplanetary launchers that's that is kind of what I was supposed to be doing today but I uh I really felt like I needed to kill some, some small defenseless creatures so I hope you will excuse me for that but I will see you then or when we're gonna do that bye